This video is specifically for young people. Uh, if you're over the hill like me, you can watch it too. And I hope you'll pass it along to any young people you might know. In the 20th century, most governments all over the world shifted to democracy or majority rule, which is not the same thing as liberty. But liberty is a subject for another day. Our uh, subject today is the impoverishment of the young. Under majority rule, which I regard as mob rule, the way politicians get elected is by bribing the voters to vote for them. The universal promise of both the Democratic and Republican parties in the U.S. has been, I will give you what you want and you won't have to pay for it. I will force someone else to pay for it. Well, who is this someone? If you're a young person, look in a mirror. Every morning, look in the bathroom mirror and say to yourself, that's the person who's going to pay. And pay and pay. If you take a look at an article called Seeing Red in The Economist magazine, June 13, 2009, page 33, the article talks about the federal government's unfunded liabilities, which, after all the bailouts of 2008 and 2009, under the Democratic and Republican parties, now total more than a half million dollars per household. Well, what's an unfunded liability? It's the new money, the new taxes, the federal government, meaning the Democratic and Republican parties, plan to take from you on top of all the other taxes that are already on the books that they're already collecting. Again, that's more than a half million dollars per household of new taxes you're going to pay for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, subsidizing the government's monopoly on first-class mail, subsidizing automobile companies, subsidizing tobacco growers, and subsidizing anyone else who ever sold his or her vote to the politicians. For more than a century, almost everyone who could vote voted for the Democratic or Republican parties, which means they voted to subsidize whatever their pet boondoggles were by taking money out of the pockets of people who could not vote, meaning the young, meaning you. You weren't even born yet. The government plans to bleed you white. So what's the solution? Well, it won't do much good to leave the country. Practically the whole world is under majority rule and has the same problem. Uh, while you're looking at The Economist magazine, uh, special, you might uh, want to check out a special report called A Slow-Burning Fuse. That's in June 27, 2009, which is about the fact that this is a worldwide crisis. In 1971, a newspaper editor named Howard Kirshner warned, and I quote, Once we concede to government the power of taking money from some and giving it to others, the process will not stop until the last bone of the last taxpayer is picked bare. Unquote. You, dear younger person, are Kirshner's last taxpayer. The government plans to keep you permanently broke to steal everything you will ever have. Some say this entire political robbery is crooked so the government can welsh on its promises. Well, sorry about that. Your money has been pledged to millions of old people who vote and who outnumber you. The most expensive thing in your life by far is and will be government. As far as I can see, the only solution for your generation is to spread the word as far and wide as you can. Shun the Democratic and Republican parties and start yelling one message. And here's the message. Less government today and even less tomorrow until the government is so tiny you need a microscope to find it. Let me point out, in the Vietnam War, it wasn't the majority that ended the war. 
And it wasn't the Democratic or Republican parties or any other power holders. It was millions of young people demonstrating day after day, year after year, until the power holders were so scared of what might happen that they gave up. And I think that's what you will need to do. For the average U.S. household, the unfunded liabilities, meaning the additional cost of the federal government, will be more than four times that of their mortgage, car loans, credit cards, and all other debt combined. If you're under age 50, you are in deep trouble. And if you're under 30, catastrophe. You're going to be the government's tax slave. So spread the word. Less government today and even less tomorrow. I have a young assistant uh, named Bryce that uh, I've been working with quite a while. And Bryce is in a uh, especially good position to understand all of this. He's uh, got a degree in accounting um, and he's also 20 years old. So he is one of the young people that's going to be caught in the trap. And so I'm uh, suggesting that Bryce come in and we'll talk for a while. I'm sure he's got questions or comments. Um, <laughs> so this is my friend Bryce. And um, go ahead. Well, I was, when I watched your video, I noticed you were especially negative uh, this time. Normally you bring up the coming golden age. Mm, right. Um, I think that's, you know, I'm, I'm being realistic about that. There is a golden age coming, mm -hmm. um, but we've got some really hard times to go through before we actually get there. It, it's, you know, in some ways it's very similar to what it was back in the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. The you look back at, let's say, 1774 and 1775, and you've got a bunch of farmers who are, you know, some farmers, merchants, ordinary people, who are about to take on the, the biggest, most powerful, most experienced, well-equipped military power in the world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and yet... When it was all over with, and it was really awful while it was going on, uh, when it was over with, it did begin a new golden age, in, at least in the United States, and that eventually spread to much of the rest of the world. Um, and America became, you know, by far the most free and prosperous land ever known um, you know, by, let's say, the 1900s or so. Um, but, you know, as early as like 1810, it was already obvious there was something very special about America. It was different than anywhere else. And it was at the beginning of a new golden age. And I, and I think, you know, we're in something like that. Now, I'm not saying we're going to wind up in a shooting revolution. Uh, it's possible. You never know. Um, but yeah, I think it's a virtual certainty we're going to have a, a tremendously hard time for a few years and then there will be extreme political and economic changes that will be for the better and America will, will then uh, launch itself back into a new golden age.